Pamela and welcome to my book journey and today I have a little different video today I'm gonna try doing a weekly wrap-up of my reading and so this week I had a lot of books that I was juggling and reading but I had some fun uh, some reading time fun reading time and so um, I just have I think four books Is it four four or five books that I'm gonna talk about today so I did have one finished book uh, this week, and it, I didn't read it all this week, but this is uh, a read aloud that my daughter and I have been slowly um, doing this, I think um, we started in, I think last month or maybe even February. But we read a little bit each day and and it's part of her, her uh, homeschool curriculum. But I counted it towards my reading because it is real it was to me i mean she had different opinions about this book but i really enjoyed it that was the first time i i read it as well so the book is called jeremy uh jeremy johnny tremaine and it's by esther forbes and this is a newberry winner i believe yeah it's got the little thing here and this was written so it's uh probably could be considered a ch children's children's classic because I think it was first published, right, in 1943. So, very um, old book that was written. Let's see, is that right? Yep, 1943. And so, this book is, this is set during the early, or, um, the early colonies, right before the American Revolution kicks off. And that's why we're reading it, because that's what we're studying early, uh, early American history in our in our homeschool and this follows the story of Johnny Tremaine and he is a apprentice silversmith and he is very oh, his his character he thinks that he is just the best <laughs> silversmith there is and he's is apprenticing with this um, older man he's a grandfather of this family and and then he he has uh, Johnny, and then he has two other boys that are working in the silver silversmith shop with them, with the with the grandfather that runs the silversmith shop. But Johnny is like the best, even though he's not the oldest of the boys. He is. He takes his trade very seriously, and he makes sure he pretty much runs <laughs> runs the shop because the grandfather kind of just does a little bit and then he goes and, and rests and things. So Johnny keeps the shop going. He keeps the boys in line. He has them doing all the, like what he considers the menial jobs in the, at the house. And then there's also the, the mother, the grand, the mother or the daughter of the grandfather and her husband has uh, passed away. And so she has her two daughters and then she's hoping that someday, uh, once uh, Johnny is older, he will take over the shop and then he will most likely marry one of the daughters. And I, I said she had two daughters. I think she has four. She had uh, a couple older daughters that are older than him. And then he, had, she had a daughter that was around his, his age that he kind of set in his mind that he was probably gonna end up marrying her. But anyway, something happened. Oh, and, uh, about his character, he's very proud, and even the grandfather tries to teach him, you know, he, that pride. In the he gives him biblical lessons about how pride is is a, a sin, and it, he shouldn't have be such so prideful. And he tries to teach Johnny that, because Johnny is prideful. He thinks he is the best, and that he nothing nobody can touch him as far as his work and and everything, and he thinks he's above. Um, the other boys that are there. Well, um, one day there's an accident that happens and Johnny's hand gets burned. Um, and it's not, uh, it, it's not really an accident. Well, it is an accident, but the boys, they kind of resent him. And one of the boys kind of does it on purpose and, and poor Johnny gets his, his hand burned and he, he gets his right, his right hand burned so badly that he's not able to continue working and and it was kind of on himself too because he wanted to get um a certain uh certain uh, cup that they were doing and he wanted to get it done by the deadline and he 
was working on a Sunday, which, you know, back then that was very, it was frowned upon and even, you know, he could get in really big trouble. And so when he, that happened to him, you know, some people were like, well, you know, God cursed him or, you know, punished him because he was working on the Sabbath and that kind of thing. But he, because of that, he was no long. he wasn't able to be a, a, um, silversmith anymore which is kind of sad because that's what his what he what his his um, passion was so the rest of the book follows Johnny as he's coping with trying to figure out you know what is he gonna do now when he can't he, he lost really the function of his hand what kind of job is he gonna have and because he was so prideful other jobs manual labor jobs were beneath beneath him and now he couldn't even do those jobs so it was really a uh, uh, something that he was going to have to work through and, and that book the book is about his struggle and really his uh, um, it's like a, a coming of age story and realizing what really matters and then the backdrop is he is living in the time with the people there that are rebelling against England because of all the things that are being thrown at them. We have the Boston Tea Party um, that's involved in this and he gets involved with the Sons of Liberty and it's really a really a good book. I really enjoyed it. My daughter didn't uh, enjoy it as much as I did. I think she even said maybe because it was a sent you know a boy story it was all about a boy and and she was like he there was no romance <laughs> in this book. So but you know we read it for the historical part and you know she just she didn't, she didn't connect with it. But anyway, I really enjoyed it. I gave it uh, four stars. So I did finally finish a book, it finished this book anyway. And so there was, uh, we, I started uh, a few books this week. I started this book uh, called The Maid by Nita Prose. And I'm really, I'm not done with it. I'm halfway through, I'm really enjoying it. Enjoying reading it. It's about a, a young woman who is a maid and her story is, so as far as I mean I'm right in the middle so I don't know what's gonna happen with her but she is a maid that at a fancy hotel place and I guess you would say she sounds like she's like on the spectrum she might be autistic or she just has a different way about her and I don't know if it's if she is on the spectrum or if that was just the way she was raised she was pretty much abandoned by her mother and father and she was raised by her elderly grandmother and her grandmother raised her um, a certain way and and that's all she knows is her grandmother so she speaks like an like they her grandmother liked to call her like she was like an old soul she you know she spoke the way her grandmother spoke and ta taught her the things that her grandmother you know she just was that's who she was and like she was bullied in school because she was different. She just was not like a normal child, I guess you would say. And she had a lot of social, uh, like talking to people was diff She didn't understand people, <laughs> social circumstances. So in that kind of way. So she, uh, like I said, is being raised by her grandmother and uh, what she really likes to do, is she has a passion for, which I wish I had, is cleaning. She loves to clean. And her grandmother actually was a maid at, a, um, at someone's home. And so the grandmother raised her to, you know, to clean. They had a, a cleaning schedule in their house. She taught her all kinds of things. And, and she, um, the girl, oh, and I haven't told you what her name is. Her name is, gosh, Molly, that's right, Molly Maid, Molly the Maid, Molly, and so she has a, you know, a strict schedule every day she would get with her grandmother, and like one day they would do this cleaning, one day they would do this cleaning, it was just a sweet ritual that she had with her grandmother, and then they would watch Columbo every night. Well, in the beginning of the book, uh, Molly, um, we find out Molly is, um, is in, finds a finds a dead body in her room in one of her rooms that she cleans so it goes so the story is kind of a, a um a mystery to find out 
and I'm not in I don't know even in, I'm in the middle I'm like what's gonna happen with Molly she I, I mean she's doing things that she shouldn't be doing but not in a any kind of sinister way or anything it's just her her behavior you know the way she is and and so um, I will I'm hoping to finish this um, this weekend and and then of course I will wrap this when I do my my monthly wrap wrap ups I'll let you know what happens but it's so far it's really good okay and then this book I definitely have to finish <laughs> um, by tomorrow because it's due at the library and it's uh, galore or gal that's how I say it because gal galore they say in the beginning it's um, do, 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 do. Uh, calor, the Latin word meaning warmth or heat, and so that's how we say it in Spanish. So, but anyway, this is a, a sci fi book that is about I'm not gonna hold it up because it has the <laughs> little tag on it from the library, it's, it's an inter, interlibrary loan. Anyway, this is a sci fi fantasy um, that revolves around a, a world that is coming out has come out of like a, a war situation I, I believe or something happened really bad in this place it's changed the whole their whole world and has brought out um, which they speculate they don't know but they speculate that it could have come from I think like a, a what they call the gray mist or something people have received gifts and they have and they call people that have these gifts, they call them altars. And then our main character is a mem because she can extract memories from people. And she's actually a slave uh, and her master has her extract memories and then he turns around and sells them. And in this world, memories are a commodity. People buy them because there's things that are not in the world anymore and so even she talks about um, selling memories like things that people consume it's mostly mem memories that give people pleasure like eating something or or falling in love or something like that and so people you know consume these memories they drink them like a liquid and then they experience them for a short amount of time and then and then it goes away but anyway, so she is very powerful. She doesn't know how powerful she is, but in the book, uh, a man comes and finds her and he wants her to help him on a quest of sorts to do something. And at first she's like, doesn't want to do that, but um, she ends up going with him to help him in his, um, what he wants from her as far as she, and she's the only one that could do it the, uh, the only mem as far as pulling memories that as, is powerful enough to do that. And so it's pretty, um, it took me a while to figure out what's exactly what was going on. And you know, we have all these characters and this is a part one, it's called the Nightingale Trilogy. So I'm already, I'm only halfway and we're not even close really to, so I'm thinking that like the main, the thing that they're talking about in the beginning, that quest is probably not gonna, complete at the end of this book maybe a certain maybe they'll get so far and then the next book they'll get a little closer is what i'm what i'm thinking but anyway it's really good so far and then i started reading a book with my daughter called unsinkable by jenny walsh because she wanted she wanted us to read a book about the titanic and so the first i read the first chapter to her and and it's a it's a dual perspective uh historical fiction book and i i'm not sure if it's young adult or not I have I can't remember but I'm reading this on I checked it out on Libby and so we read the first chapter and it was about a girl named Violet and she's a maid on the Titanic and we loved the first chapter I mean she Ellie really enjoyed it and she's like okay and then I said and I was telling her I go okay that's it's two it's two people it's a it's a girl Violet and another girl named Daphne is gonna be in chapter two and then Ellie goes oh well maybe she's gonna be a stowaway you know, on the Titanic, you get two perspectives, the maid and the stowaway. She was hoping it was a stowaway. And so, so I started reading the second chapter with Daphne and it says that she was in London and and it said April the 10th, and it, which was April the 10th for, for, um, 
for uh, Violet on the first thing. But anyway, I started reading and she talked, she was going for an uh, interview for a job and, and she started describing how things were in Paris and they were getting taken over by the, um, the Germans. And I'm thinking, what is she talking to Germans? You know, this sounds like the book I just read. And then, and then she says, talks about the Nazis. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Nazis weren't around during <laughs> when the Titanic was happening. And so I flipped the pages back and then it said April the 10th, 1944, 1945. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a dual timeline book. And, and Ellie was, Ellie was like, what's, what's going on? I thought she was on the Titanic. And I was like, yeah, I thought she was on the Titanic too. So then I went and I looked up Goodreads and, and actually read more into what it's about. And it is a dual timeline between Violet who's on the Titanic and then this other girl, Daphne. And, and as I was reading what the book was about, it's not really even about the Titanic. <laughs> about the Titanic it's mo it's about these two women that overcome adversities and Violet lived through the sinkus lived through the uh, lived through the Titanic but then went through the World War one so she went went through World War one and then uh, Daphne is gonna go through World War two and it was gonna be those two stories and then I read a review and somebody said that they didn't like it because there was no connect, they didn't feel there was any connection between the two women and it was basically, you're reading just two stories. And I was like, N definitely Ellie didn't want to read that because really there was nothing in the, about the Titanic. I mean, there was just a small portion in the very beginning. And I looked ahead and I showed her, I go, well, this, that's not, <laughs> they're not gonna talk too much about it, I guess. So we DNF that one. And then I found another uh, book. And then she's like, wait a minute. Oh, going back to the, the other one. Because the, the book is called Unsinkable. And on the cover, it has a girl's face. And, and then the Titan. I'll put a thing up here. And have the boat. So she's like, that's false, adver <laughs> false advertisement. Anyway, so uh, I picked, found another book for her. I thought we could read together. And that was called Luck luck in the titanic i'm also reading that check that out from libby luck in the titanic i'll put that up here too and we've read the first two chapters and this and as i was reading i'm like ellie ellie look this girl is a stowaway you wanted a stowaway and now she is a stowaway as a young a woman chinese she is part chinese her dad was chinese and her mother's english and her and her brother are twins and they're part they uh, are acrobats and they are going to the United States on the Titanic. And she was originally gonna go to the tight, uh, board the Titanic on first class with a um, first class uh, woman that had bought her ticket, but the woman ended up passing away unexpectedly. But, but the young girl, I'm trying to remember her name. I, I, I should have wrote it down. She was, um, and the brother was going with the circus company separately. And so she, when she was boarding with her ticket, you know, she still had her first class ticket. When she was boarding, they wouldn't let her aboard because she didn't have special papers because of the, of a particular like Chinese act that came, was in place. And she had to have certain papers allowing her permission to go to the United States because she was Chinese, even though she was, and she said, well, I'm English too. And, the, and then they said it didn't matter. So she couldn't go on board norm, in the normal way with her ticket. So she had to find a way to um, get on board and stow away. So that's as far as we got. We've only read, I think, the first two chapters. And actually, we're actually listening to that one on, um, I found it on Libby, but only as a um, an audio uh, version of it. So. Uh, Ellie and I listened to the first couple chapters and it's good so far the 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 person that's doing the the um, the voice is, is really good okay so that is that's it for this week I, um, I keep thinking there's another book I read but I looked inside my Goodreads and I didn't see any other ones that I started I don't think let me double check well if I, for, if I forget I I forget, but mostly yeah, it's been the maid and uh, uh, galore and really happy that I finally finished that one. <laughs> you know, when I read it with her, I read it really slow. 
So that's it for my week, my weekend uh, review of what books I've started in May and had a good, um, good week reading. And I'm surprised. And these two books, they're they're really going to be fast reads because they're you know things are happening. Especially the maid book, it's really good. So I will see you all later. Thank you for hanging out with me today, and you all have a blessed day. Bye.